Hi Joomla Chit Chatters, this is the second time that I've uh, recorded this this morning because I didn't test my audio first. <laughs> Alright, so um, a couple of uh, people in the chat were asking about some of the ways that I work with K2 um, to reduce my overall development time but also to reduce overhead on my sites both optimization for um, usability and client usability. Um, I see client usability as something that's really critical. Um, as front-end developers, as developers, our time is really valuable. And while it's all good and well to get people on SLAs, um, even minimizing the amount of time that you spend working on those SLAs maximizes your income. Um, I'm sure this is all stuff that you know. So one of the things that I like to be able to ensure is that once I deploy a site, ideally a client never has to call me again. We don't mind if they do, but ideally they shouldn't have to. And one of the keys to doing this is to ensuring that they do the same thing the same way every single time. Um, that's really the, the crux of things. I find that one of the biggest issues with uh, websites that I inherit from other developers, um, whether it's Joomla, whether it's WordPress, WordPress is particularly egregious, but Joomla can be just as bad, um, is that they suffer from modulitis or pluginitis or packageitis where for every single element of the site the developer ha has used a different tool or a different plugin to achieve different things on the site and to be able to say add in extra modules into this section here or that I've got on this page the these navigation here they might have to create a new nav menu and manually build that uh, to my mind that's a terrible user experience for the client they shouldn't have to think about any of that one of the things the clients don't want to do more than anything is think they just they don't care about their website except in so far as it just works for them and so I try and build things that just work um, one of the ways that I do this is by using K2. Um, K2, I feel, is super critical in terms of how it works because of the way that category layouts operate. Um, the difference between um, com content and K2 is that when you assign a template override to a category in K2, that implements it on the category level, the items that are viewed in a category list, and the actual items or articles, if you're using Joomla terminology, the articles layout overrides as well. So I can override everything with, with a series of template overrides by overriding the category in K2. Whereas with com content, it's a little bit trickier than that. So if I go into the categories that I have for this particular site and I look at the blog, you can see that I've got the blog template. With the tools section, I've got the simple blocks template. With the services, I've got the simple blocks template. And so what this means is that when I go into it, if I look at the services section, my simple blocks template gives me the category description text and these simple blocks that pull out the title, the hero image, and the intro text of each of these articles as well as the read more links and lay them out like that. And then when I click through, I have a layout that has the, the hero section, background image, the text, these articles haven't been fully built out yet, these sites are still under development, um, and the call to action that I've got in this section. Whereas in the blog category, the layout's a bit different, and again, you go through, you still get this, but you have a little bit of information about the um, about the blog post when it was made, um, some sharing tools, and that sort of thing. So they're just different layouts, but they go all the way through from the category level. And what this means is that it gets really simple for clients to manage how their site operates because they're doing everything from the category from the from the K2 items list so this drives absolutely everything on this site so if I go back to the home page of this site an item is driving this hero image its text each of these are items that are being pulled in this is an item that's being pulled in even each of these individual logos is an item that's being pulled in 
Um, so all of that is driving all of this site. So let's take a look at how that's actually working. So one of the easiest examples is just looking at these logos. Now, one of the great things about K2 is that not only does it resize every image that you upload into its image tab, but it resizes it to five different size. Now you can set that both globally and on a category by category level. So on the logos category, I have a category for logos. So let me just filter that. I have a setting on here that basically reduces them down to a much smaller set of sizes than I do for say hero images. And so all you have to do is to create an item, give it a name, assign it to the client logos category and then image the image tab just put in a square version of the logo that's it upload it and the, it, the, it's taken care of by this module so if I go into here and look at the where are we are, are we? Um, to content uh, lending panel there we go so I'm pulling in a my static logo carousel template which means that I don't want it rotating around like a carousel um, I am the source is retrieving items from categories the category is client logos now it doesn't matter that I've got all this turned on because I have it all stripped out in the actual layout override for that particular template. So this particular template only pulls in um, the image and in this case it pulls in the small version of the image um, and that's basically all it does. So this this is set to a limit of 30 and it will pull up to 30 images in the in a random order in this case but I could set it to a specific ordering if they wanted it that way but this pulls in a random set of uh, a set of 30 icons from logos from the logo category and lays them out randomly. All right, that's all pretty standard stuff for anyone who use, uses K2, but it gives you an idea of my methodology, my philosophy for how clients should be managing their time on the server. Um, so let's take a look at something a little more complicated. Let's take a look at the services section. And again, this is a really simple example of how I do these things. So this is another k2 content module this is in this case pulling out so let's take a look at this is the aloha mortgages products so this is my simple blocks layout again it's retrieving items from categories it's retrieving them from the services category it's pulling a maximum of five and the item ordering is ordering and again my template layout manages this. I just have to pause. No, I'm not going to pause. I'm just going to cancel this phone call that's coming in. All right. So it pulls in these. It pulls in the hero image, the intro text, and the uh, the article text. If I click through to these, this is where things start to get interesting. You'll note that they have a hero section. And this sits outside, this sits in a module position. And I've also got a call to action which sits in a module position. And if I go through to any of them in this category, they all follow the same thing. They've got a hero section and a, and a, a call to action module. There's a hero section and a call to action module. A hero section and a call to action module. Okay, so I've done this with just one module for each section through this fantastic module called K2 BNR Content. The cool thing about K2 BNR Content is that it does dynamic here is sections dynamic modules based on the current item being viewed so in this case I have pulled out my hero template and all it does this is for my hero headers so all it does is grab from my item so let's take a look at the wealth accumulation module it grabs either the title or from the extra fields the hero title, which I haven't used, I can put in hero title, uh, the extra hero content. So, managing your nest egg 
the right way. Let's do that, make it a H2 because this is also a, an SEO exercise. So I add that in there. And then if I refresh, I've got it in there. So I go into the extra field section and all it's doing is it's pulling in that image from here, the title or the hero title and the hero content into that section, into that module position at the top there. But I only need one of them because I'm using the hero template. I'm using advanced modules manager by regular labs to assign it to the hero, the home page, the general service, general page, the services page and the blog page, but only two items. So it will only work on those pages and it will dynamically pull the, that content into those positions. So this helps me reduce modulitis in a big way because otherwise I would need to either do some fancy stuff with the template override where I made it so that if a certain type of category, let's, okay, so one of the things that I'm doing is I want to make sure that my body section is in a column that isn't full width because it gets too hard to read but I want this to be full width and I want it to sit under the header and all these sorts of things. Now, there are a number of different ways I could do this. Could I build this into the template override for the item? I absolutely could. But I would then have to either do some fancy footwork with CSS and viewport widths and all this sort of stuff, which can get tricky at times and I don't like to do it. Um, or I could do some um, conditional statements on the container um, of, the, of the, the, the container section for the overall body content or I could add some additional CSS into the body tag and adjust the container width based on that. There are a lot of different ways that we could handle this. To my mind, because I'm also going to have some manual hero headers from time to time um, using the custom module then I will generally speaking use want to use that same module position it just makes my life easier so in this case I've got the K2 BNR content module dynamically pulling in whatever the image title and hero content is that is set in the extra fields of that item and pulling it into just that item um, one module lots of items. Reduces modulitis, makes my client's life easier, makes my life easier. It's the same with the call to action. With the call to action you have just the one call to action block. In this case I do have two because I've got a, a different, a really different style going on in one of them. Um, but for the most part I've got one call to action block and it's using these call to action extra fields that I have where I can have a title, a copy, I can set the button link that I want to make, the button text and the background color of the call to action. And so I can change all of that and you can see that in this case I've chosen a secondary color which automatically sets the, um, the colors here, the button color based on whatever you've selected. So it does all of that and then lays it out there. So again that's just one module once pulling it into multiple different items. And that saves me a lot of time and it saves the client a lot of time. Um, so overall, that's how I try to do things. Um, you, can, you can get more complicated as you go and you can do some really sophisticated things. Um, so for example, were I to use, were I to have a testimonials category where I had client testimonials and had a testimonials block and I wanted to make sure that industry specific testimonials were applied against industry specific categories. What I could do is to basically assign a testimonial block module, a K2 testimonial block module to the, a specific position and only allow it to be viewed on categories that, um, only allow it to be viewed on K2 categories that were those industry specific but then only pull in items that were tagged in a specific way. So if I look at, um, let's look at another one that I did. So if I look at this testimonial block, I can pull in testimonials, but only ones that are tagged with a certain way. So this is a combination of retrieving items from categories, the testimonials category, and then pulling that in 
to uh, if I tag this with say you know the uh, an industry type let's say clothing industry for example I could only pull in testimonials that were tagged with clothing but then I could also assign that only to K2 items that were within categories that were of a specific category type or that were tagged in a certain way. So you can get some really sophisticated stuff happening where you really reduce the number of K2 uh, uh, modules that you use by both using K2 BNR content to be to, to pull item data from the actual item um, or by m mixing up how you use tags and items to draw to make it easier for the clients to basically just you know create an item give it an article give it a tag save and you're done um, I also had Gura build me something which was really interesting for another project where it was basically the same as K2 BNR content where it was all driven dynamically but you could also restrict it by tag matching so you could also say all right I want to pull um, I want to pull items from here but only if they match the tags of other particular uh, 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 only if they match the tag from the item that it's with I've forgotten exactly what I did but uh, I can explain that later um, anyway so that's how I do these things and it really helps to actually reduce the amount of overhead in both the client workload they only ever have to do things once they go to the the, um, the client goes to the k2 item creates a new item gives it a title gives it a size of a category gives it an image, fills out the intro copy, and if they then have to, they go to the extra fields, and those extra fields are specific to the category. Um, it makes their life easier. I never hear from them again, except when they, you know, they want to upgrade or add some extra features in, um, and it makes them super, super happy because they're able to manage the site themselves. Makes me happy because I don't have to reuse code and be building up lots of modules and you know reduces the overall reliance on tons and tons of modules which i think you know also re reduces the overall s server overhead of having to uh, run a module or plug in heavy website um, anyway so that's all for this section um, if you've got any questions feel free to um, to hit me up in the joomla chit chat on slack um, and hopefully we'll, uh, we'll go from there thanks guys